Hello everyone. I'm Ted. And today we will discuss chapter 20. Employee empowerment, downsizing and work-life balance. And in this chapter we will be discussing Empowerment Introduction Importance How to achieve empowerment Inhibitors to empowerment Conditions necessary for empowerment Techniques to empower employees Downsizing Reasons for downsizing Strategy and ethics HR's role in downsizing Work-life balance Factors affecting work-life balance Reasons, effects and solutions Strategies to strike a fine balance Let's start Empowerment, Introduction Empowerment, Introduction Empowerment is the authority to take decisions within one's area of operations without having to get approval from anyone else. Here, the operatives are encouraged to use their initiative to do things the way they like. To this end, the employees are given not just authority but resources as well so that they not only take decisions but implement them quickly. This empowerment means giving the employees the authority to make decisions and providing them with financial resources to implement these decisions. Empowerment helps people to think and act independently. It boosts up their morale and self-confidence. It energizes people to take action and overcome feelings of powerlessness or helplessness. When people are empowered, they are enabled to direct their work and make decisions about the areas of their job for which they are responsible. They do not have to seek permission from anyone. Moving next. Elements of Empowerment Elements of Empowerment 1. Personal Mastery Empowerment implies personal grip over the situation. The empowered individual possesses the knowledge, skills, and experience needed to put things in place. He slash she knows what needs to be done in order to deliver results. 2. Self-confidence and determination. Empowered individuals have a high amount of self-esteem. They have a strong desire to excel which compels them to turn problems into opportunities. 3. Making things happen. Empowerment implies a strong desire to make things happen. It means taking full control of forces impacting the result. Empowered individuals know how to produce a desired result, which is planned by them. 4. Find meaning in their efforts. Empowered individuals focus their energies on activities that bring meaning to their lives. There is harmony in what they say and act. Their purposeful actions produce outcomes that will benefit the general public and make the world a better place to live. 5. Have faith and trust in people. Empowered people have a sense of trust. They are confident that they will be treated fairly and equitably by their superiors. They are more self-assured and honest in their communications. They are willing to get along with people and turn themselves into dependable team members. They are less resistant to change. Their behavior is likely to be open, honest, and congruent than deceptive or shallow. Moving next. Importance Importance Empowerment has a tonic effect on the psychology of employees. It makes them feel better and work harder in order to prove their talent. Empowerment helps the organization also in many ways. Attract talent, it is vital to have a workforce with potential, but how do you get your employees to perform at their highest ability? A work environment consisting of empowerment will help to keep top employees and will attract new, high-quality employees. People become invaluable assets, empowering employees can be the key in turning an average employee into an exceptional one. Empowered employees are usually happier and, therefore, more likely to stay. Fully charged and self-motivated employees, the difference between mediocre and excellent employees depends on how the employee is managed. The job of an empowering manager is more similar to that of a coach than that of a traditional manager. The manager's mission is to unlock the potential of every person within the organization. Happy, productive workforce, motivated, empowered employees are more productive. They are able to use their own innovation to streamline inefficient processes and policies, saving both your money, as well as that of your customers. Tonic effect on the psychology of employees 
Empowerment unleashes an individual's potential and enhances his slash her abilities to facilitate growth in the organization. Moving next. How to achieve empowerment. How to achieve empowerment. The empowerment process consists of a series of well-calculated moves and steps, as explained below. Articulating a clear vision and goals, having a clear vision of where the organization is going and how the individuals can contribute is essential to build an environment of empowerment. Using word pictures, stories, metaphors, and real-life examples would go a long way in achieving this. Empowerment is enhanced also when specific behavioral goals are identified that help guide individuals' behavior as they work on their tasks. Allowing people to have a grip over a problem, the most important thing a manager can do to empower other people is to help them experience personal mastery over some challenge or problem. By accomplishing results, by defeating an opponent or by resolving a problem, one gains a sense of personal mastery over events and situations. A manager should encourage people to expand their vision, exploit their true potential, and assume full responsibility for results by meeting challenges head on putting resources to the best use. Modeling, by showing appropriate behaviors to subordinates, managers can get things on track quickly. While acting as role models, managers must lead by example, by setting a shining example of exemplary character and conduct whether in following a rule, adopting operating policies, dealing with customers or putting resources to the best advantage. You cannot expect your people to work overtime, while you are relaxing on the beach. Above all, your people have to see you in office in order to learn from you. You cannot expect to act as their role model when you are not in the office most of the times. Providing support, empowerment flourishes in an environment of praise, appreciation, and recognition. Managers should encourage employees through rewards, awards, incentives, recognition, express approval of them, back them, and reassure them of their full support and cooperation. Employees must feel proud to be working in a climate of trust, mutual support, and cooperation. They must be encouraged to give their best and live up to their true potential. Making the workplace attractive, to empower people, managers should help to make the work environment fun and attractive. This can be done by holding frequent social gatherings to build rapport, offering positive feedback, and keeping the employees in good humor. Money alone does not satisfy workers. The atmosphere must be tension-free and friendly. Providing information and resources, without clear and transparent communication, people at various levels cannot make good decisions, managers should provide the resources needed to accomplish the task. Moreover, Employees should be given the training and development needed as well as the space, time, and equipment required. In addition, managers should ensure that people have access to communication and interpersonal networks that will make their jobs easier. Finally, individuals should be given discretion to spend monies or commit resources to activities that they consider important. Connecting to outcomes, workers can experience more empowerment when they can see the outcomes of their work. Japanese companies routinely send teams of workers to interact with end-users of products manufactured by them with a view to getting valuable feedback. The interaction with end-users often leads to unique ideas that facilitate further improvements in the products that the workers produced. When workers actually saw the outcomes of their efforts, and how it made an impact on the lives of the end-users, they felt greatly empowered. Moving next. Inhibitors to Empowerment Inhibitors to Empowerment Many factors come in the way of empowerment. These can be listed thus. 1. Managerial reluctance to empower subordinates. Some managers are reluctant to empower subordinates because they are not confident about the capabilities and competencies of their subordinates. They feel that their subordinates are not competent enough to accomplish the work, are not interested in taking more responsibility, are already overloaded and unable to take up more responsibility, would require too much time to train, should not be involved in tasks typically performed by the boss. 2. Personal insecurities of managers. Some managers are nervous about empowering others fully, as this may result in the loss of power, dilution of their authority, sharing of secrets that could put them in a spot and so on. The reasons for such insecurity could be the following. 
Managers fear of losing their power or position. Managers have an intolerance for ambiguity. Managers prefer to work on a task by themselves. Managers are unwilling to absorb the costs associated with subordinates making mistakes. In sum, these managers' rationale is, I'm willing to empower people, but when I do, they either mess things up or try to grab all the glory. 3. Need for control. Managers who are reluctant to empower others have a pronounced desire to be in control of everything. As they are ultimately accountable for the results, they want to avoid any problems by handing over the baton to someone who is not fully prepared, fully trained, not as experienced and competent as themselves. Many managers have a feeling that direction from upstairs is the name of the game and is absolutely essential to ensure success at every stage. 4. Delegating work. Many managers are unwilling to delegate work to subordinates in a meaningful way, allowing subordinates to think and act independently in order to produce results. Even when they delegate, they prefer to monitor everything from close quarters. By putting tight controls in place, they literally stop the subordinate from taking a novel or innovative path thinking independently. Moving next. Conditions necessary for empowerment. Conditions necessary for empowerment. There are four basic conditions necessary for empowerment to gain credibility and acceptance at various levels in an organization. Participation, workers must be encouraged to take initiative. To this end, the bureaucratic hurdles that come in the way must be removed. Proper training should be given to employees so that they can participate more actively and make things happen. Innovation, management must encourage employees to try out new ideas and make decisions that help in finding new and improved ways of doing things. Even when employees fail in their attempts to break the mold of custom, the words of encouragement must come the same way so that they begin to feel that failures are stepping stones to success. One day, with such a supportive management, they are sure to ride the tidal wave of success. Information, employees must have free access to information and resources that they need to nurture their talents. If they need additional training in putting the classified information to use, it should be offered readily. Accountability, empowered employees should be held accountable for results. This step is not intended to identify their mistakes and single them out for punishment, but only to ensure that they are giving their best and working toward mutually agreed goals. Such employees are encouraged to go the same way at their own comfortable pace. Moving next. Techniques to empower employees. Techniques to empower employees. A wide variety of companies, nowadays have undertaken interventions to empower employees at various levels. These include techniques such as quality circles, autonomous work groups and quality of work life councils. Quality circles, a quality circle is a small group of employees who meet periodically to identify, analyze, and solve quality and other work related problems in their area. Generally speaking, members of a particular circle should be from the same work area, or who perform similar work so that the problems they select will be familiar to all of them. The ideal size of the group is 6 to 8 members. The size should not be too big so as to prevent members from interacting actively and contribute meaningfully in each meeting. Autonomous work groups slash self-managing teams, a team may be defined small group of people with complementary skills who work actively together to achieve a common purpose for which they hold themselves collectively accountable. Self-managing teams typically consist of 5 to 20 multi-skilled workers who rotate jobs to produce an entire product or service or at least one complete aspect or portion of a product or service such as engine assembly, insurance claim processing, etc. These groups are empowered to make the decisions required to manage themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Members here make decisions on scheduling work, allocating tasks, training for job skills, evaluating performance, selecting new teammates and controlling the quality of work. Members are collectively held responsible for the team's overall performance. Qualify of working life, QWL QWL refers to the level of satisfaction, motivation, involvement, and commitment individuals experience with respect to their lives at work. Some of the major factors that affect the quality of work life include pay, incentives for better performance, benefits, job security, flexible work schedules, working on challenging and motivating jobs and empowerment.
Moving next. Downsizing. Downsizing. Thanks to global competition, every company is forced to remain lean and efficient in order to stay ahead of competition and serve customers well. Downsizing is a powerful tool in the hands of companies trying to remain efficient. Downsizing refers to a process where a company or a firm simply reduces its workforce in order to cut the operating costs and improve efficiency. Definition, simply stated, downsizing is the planned elimination of positions job in an organization. It is a technique to reorganize a company's internal operations aimed at reducing unwanted hands and improving profitability. Merits 1. Impact on employer. Helps a company fight economic shocks and competitive attacks. Improve operational efficiencies. Market share improves. Lean and clean operations. Profitability improves. 2. Impact on workforce. Surplus staff facing pink slip forced to acquire new skills and find their feet in the marketplace. Labor mobility improves. 3. Impact on society. Survival of the fittest. Lean and profitable companies offering better customer service. Scare resources of a country put to excellent use. Demerits. 1. Impact on employer. Morale of employees take a big hit. Difficulty in finding loyal and reliable employees. 2. Impact on workforce. Disruption of interpersonal relations within a company. Workers getting penalized for mistakes committed by top management. Staff who remain live with constant fear of job loss. Lower self-confidence and, as a result, employees turn risk-averse. 3. Impact on society. Greater unemployment. Lesser income levels and fall in standards of living. Social welfare expenses increase as governments might be forced to take care of displaced workers. Moving next. Reasons for downsizing. Reasons for downsizing. The important reasons for downsizing may be listed thus. Merging of two or more firms, firms merge their operations to improve market share. When this happens, some positions become redundant. Some members might be asked to leave voluntarily. Other employees who are difficult to manage might be laid off compulsorily. Acquisition, if one organization purchases another one. There is a definite change in the management and the acquired company staff has to face unemployment. The reason for this is the same as the earlier case, that is, to cut costs and increase the revenues. Change in management, whenever there is a change at the top level, companies resort to workforce reductions. The new management might have a different way of dealing with things and people. By eliminating unwanted hands, they want to show to the world that they mean business and they do not want to live with inefficiencies of any kind. Economic crisis, downsizing is carried out in case of crises of various kinds. Workforce reductions happen across the board and this might happen without any violent protests and demonstrations. Even reputed and popular firms resort to downsizing with a view to staying lean and efficient. Strategy changes, when companies want to concentrate on projects slash products with high returns and put an end to those that are not so profitable, workforce reductions happen. Excessive workforce, in a period of high growth, a company hires excess staff, to meet the needs of a growing business. However, in times of recession the business opportunities dwindle, leading to workforce reductions. Computerization, computerization, all over the globe, has compelled many companies to lop off unwanted hands. It is a typical case of an efficient machine eating away the jobs handled by too many inefficient hands consuming a huge amount of time. Where speed and efficiency are extremely important, computerization is the only way. Likewise, where costs have to be brought down to improve operational efficiencies, companies have to show the door to surplus staff. Outsourcing practice, to compete on a global scale, companies need to look at how their internal operations are carried out. Any jobs that can be handled effectively by specialist external agencies can be outsourced. Outsourcing, stated simply, is the contracting out of a company's non-core, non-revenue producing activities to specialists. Organizations catering to international markets require a huge and efficient employee base. 
If this labor can be obtained by exporting the job to other countries, a huge downsizing takes place in the parent country. For instance, if a certain job can be done more economically in India than in the United States, the business is operated from that country. Operational efficiency, a major benefit of downsizing is that it cuts flat and improves operational efficiency. The jobs that do not bring in returns and the non-core operations that could be turned over to external experts become the first targets in downsizing exercises. Non-performers are shown the door. Corporate resources are put to best use by focusing attention on core processes that a company can do better than its rivals. Moving next. Strategy and Ethics for Downsizing Strategy and Ethics for Downsizing Downsizing affects the morale of employees in a negative way. For employees, the process can be stressful, because they may feel uncertain about whether or not they will continue to be employed. Sometimes, downsizing is very abrupt, with a huge batch of employees being relieved from employment on the same day, while in other cases it may late off slowly. Employers should remember that downsizing is very upsetting and stressful, and they should take steps to conduct it smoothly while assuring valued employees that their jobs are secure. To avoid violent protests and demonstrations, the whole exercise needs to be carried out following the rule book. Advance notice of what is likely to happen, who is going to be affected and why the company is forced to take such a step needs to be provided. The employees must be informed about their future prospects in the company. Severance packages that are as per law and which adequately secure the affected employees' futures till they find new jobs too are a vital part of the retrenchment strategy. The criteria for laying off unwanted hands should also be spelled out. Some companies also help surplus staff find alternative jobs in the employment market through outplacement assistance, offering additional training, hiring a recruitment consultant who would find jobs to those who may have to leave the organization for various reasons counseling help to get along with the resultant stress, assuring affected families of all possible help, etc. Moving next. Downsizing and HR. Downsizing and HR. Downsizing often comes as a rude shock for the affected workers. The other colleagues who are left behind are forced to grapple with an uncertain work environment as well as unreliable and unrealistic expectations from the management. Many talented employees quit the company in alarm. The aftermath of downsizing is a wounded workforce that is stressed and demotivated. The HR needs to play a key leadership role and take a constructive approach before, during and after the downsizing initiative to improve sentiments and bring everything back to normalcy. Important HR initiatives in this connection include Employee involvement HR should take all affected employees into confidence and explain the purpose of downsizing. The concerns of victims need to be looked into closely. The severance package should be designed in a fair way. The other employees need to be assured that such things do not get repeated in the near future, and that the management has done everything in an equitable manner. Communication, employees do not want to be kept in the dark on issues affecting their livelihood. This will only breed mistrust in management and dampen their spirits considerably. A candid, two-way communication exercise would help in explaining why downsizing is taking place, what would happen to those who are asked to leave, how it benefits the organization and what is the immediate next step. Support programs and selection processes, the organization must help separating employees find their feet in the market especially in their search for new employment. The supportive effort may cover career counseling, stress management, outplacement assistance and financial planning before and after the downsizing. While identifying the at-risk employees, strict adherence to ethical values, moral standards, and well-established procedures is essential. Survivors must be assured that the layoff policy is a fair one and is not being colored by personal biases. While drawing the curtain between at-risk employees and separating employees, it is always better to explain the selection criteria and encourage employees to discuss their fears openly. Human Resource Management Tools and Systems Alignment During a downsizing initiative, HR managers should also focus on aligning HR programs, policies, and systems with a lean and healthy-looking outfit. In an attempt to build confidence and earn the trust of survivors, 
New initiatives in the form of stock options and profit sharing plans could be introduced, thus, demonstrating that any constructive effort in rebuilding the organization would be appropriately rewarded. To ease the pressure, Flexible schedules could be Training planned. and development. Daycare survivors must care be helped to adjust to the new challenges and jobs brought in by a new look organization and its culture. To think and act independently. To this end, keeping the best and skills and the knowledge of creation must be offered almost simultaneously. Employees must also be equipped with the attitude, language, and tools needed to handle the emerging and future challenges. This would certainly jack up training and development budgets of organizations. However, the effort would pay off in the long run because employees would be better equipped to handle future challenges with relative ease and comfort. Job massacres may help reduce costs but the side effects are disproportionately high. If not handled properly, top talent will vanish within no time. Settled with heavier workloads, survivors may become victims of stress and burnout sooner than expected. If no alternatives to layoffs exist, HR managers can make them seem less arbitrary and cruel by keeping the communication lines open and explaining with dignity the strategy behind them. They can provide outplacement services, generous severance pay, and family counseling. They can also offer resources for self-evaluation, and employee retraining or job redeployment to enhance skills that will make the fired worker more employable, easing the transition to another job. If they cannot guarantee employment, they can at least guarantee employability. Moving next. Work-life balance. Work-life balance. Work-life and personal life are two sides of a coin. In the name of becoming career racehorses, one should not burn out too soon. Too much work without any fun would send people to their graves sooner than expected. Work can also be enjoyed. Factories and offices can be turned into enjoyable and exciting places of work if there is support from the top. Maintaining work-life balance, therefore, has become a priority area for HR managers these days. What do you mean by work-life balance? Work-life balance does not mean slicing out equal number of hours for each of your work and personal activities, which is highly unlikely in the real world. Also an individual's work-life balance will vary with time. The right balance for you when you are single will be different when you marry and it changes again when you are blessed with children, and again when you are nearing retirement. There is no perfect, one-size-fits-all balance you should be striving for. In fact achievement and enjoyment are the two sides of an acceptable definition of work-life balance. A good working definition of work-life balance is meaningful daily achievement and enjoyment in each of my four life quadrants, work, family, friends, and self. At work you can create your own best work-life balance by making sure you not only achieve, but also reflect the joy of the job, and the joy of life, every day. If nobody pats you on the back today, pat yourself on the back. And help others to do the same. When you do, when you are a person that not only gets things done, but also enjoys the doing, it attracts people to you. They want you on their team and they want to be on your team. Let us take a close look at the issue of work-life balance and the factors behind related problems. Hectic schedules, with hectic schedules, high-pressure work assignments and deadly targets. You have to race against time to get noticed and be in the reckoning. Otherwise you will be labeled a poor performer. Intense competition, in recent years, the lives of executives have been thrown out of gear completely, thanks to the intense competitive environment the proliferation of information technology and instant, 24-7 connectivity. Thus, there is an urgent need to strike a balance between an executive's career and ambition on one hand, and pleasure, leisure, family, and spiritual development on the other hand. Very little time to relax, the 50-70 hour work weeks have become common these days. Not only that, it's simply not sufficient to work, you need to work hard and work smart to get ahead of others and executives are burning their candle of energies too soon. Run that extra mile to deliver results, to deliver results, you are forced to run that extra mile very fast, sacrificing family, relationships, friends, community work, leisure, pleasure and everything that brings meaning, happiness and fulfillment to life. Remember the famous words, what's this life, full of care, there is no time to stand and stare. Weekend Parents 
In the case of dual career couples, a common phenomenon in the 21st century parents are unable to devote time to their children, and are reduced to what is popularly known as weekend parents. Mental wrecks, workaholics who are unable to strike a fine balance between work pressures and personal and family issues often go on to suffer from heart ailments, cardiovascular problems, sleep disorders, depression, jumpiness, irritability, insecurity, poor concentration and even nervous breakdowns. Unhealthy habits, a time will come when they lose emotional balance, get irritated over petty issues, indulge in verbal abuse and when stress begins to work on their nerves they begin to destroy their personal lives through excessive smoking, drinking, and gambling. No one knows how many kids are home after school, without an adult, but the number is in the millions. These children spend time on video games, TV, and the internet with damaging impacts on their psychological growth and development. It is not a healthy sign from the employer's point of view also. Stress and burnout, executive stress and burnout would lead to a lot of problems on the behavioral front. The race for grabbing space, facilities, opportunities, and media attention does not end usually with high performance. It actually breeds anger, frustration, and resentment among colleagues leading to a kind of tug of war for everything. The resultant political behavior would bring down overall performance substantially. The practical side of the coin. Western countries make it mandatory for businesses to extend work-life balance to their employees. In addition, active groups such as the Employers for Work-Life Balance in the UK and Center for Work-Life Policy in the US support the cause and ensure a fair play in the larger interests of millions of workers. Globalization has made an employee's life very tough in India in recent times. They have to work under three different time zones conforming to the time of Europe, US and Asia and in many cases, working night shifts has, more or less, become a routine. In service industries, extensive travel has become the order of the day. The onslaught from technology in the form of cell phones, internet and emails has literally converted ordinary employees into economic slaves of industry. The entry of educated women has brought in additional complexities into the work spot in the form of creation of creches, anti-sexual harassment drives, medical facilities to elders and children at home, maternity leave, etc. Telecommuting facility extended to employees in MNCs and large Indian companies such as HP, Mindtree, Wipro, Infosys and IBM has eased the pressure a bit. But, as things stand today, no employee can proudly declare that he or she is free from all kinds of work-related problems and tensions at least one day a week. Companies such as TCS, Microsoft India, IGATE Global Solutions, HCL Infosystems, HSBC, Marriott Hotels India, Godrej Consumer Products, Google India, Max New York Life, Eli Lilly, Canon India, Sapient, Infosys are trying their best to correct the situation. They are trying every trick in the book to cheer up stressed and overworked employees through novel policies and funny ideas. In a tough competitive terrain, Indian employers are not leaving anything to chance. Employees are pampered like never before. The bouquet of benefits, facilities, and personal services being offered by most companies to woo employees is more or less the same. The focus has shifted from the what to the how how to make every touch point between the organization and the employees an experience that lets them know how valuable they are. Strategies to strike a balance 1. Budget your time both in and out of the office. Schedule your time efficiently at work put yourself on your calendar and take some time for you and your family slash friends. Leave work on time at least three days per week, there are times when working late just can't be helped, but schedule your time to leave on time three days per week. 2. Control interruptions and distractions, stay focused while in the office, and budget your time effectively. Try to schedule a block of time during the day without meetings when you CG and focus on your tasks with minimal interruptions. 3. Explore the availability of flex time, research flex time options within your organization. If available, it may be a helpful solution. 4. Seize the weekend, plan your time off as you plan your work week. Learn to say no if required. Sharing the responsibilities will help. And do not commit for something which is practically not possible to achieve. 5. Schedule activities with family and friends, a weekend trip, or just something fun. 
Make your time away from work count. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. This video is brought to you by Bookstoon. Like this video to encourage us. Share this video to spread the knowledge. And subscribe to this channel for latest update.